Female representation and sexism in video games have been heated discussion topics in the industry for a long time. But now, more than ever, women are giving a voice to what they want from their games and the types of games they want to play. And although there has been a big shift in the numbers of women consuming games, the percentage of women working as developers in the industry is still an incredibly sobering statistic. The most recent ABS survey discovered that only 8.7% of Australian games developers are women. And while globally these stats are marginally higher, hovering around 20%, compared to the number of women working in similar creative professions, the video game industry is way behind on the gender balance. It's got a lot to do with our beginnings as a tech industry and how the tech industry became really coded masculine and then it sort of fed through to game development. Can you, if you put in that magnetic card, then can you put in any height that you want? And yeah, the program will accept any height. Now, we put in the same ones that we used on the plotter over here. Women in coding was uh, and computer development were huge to begin with. Um, even the term debug was coined by a woman who literally had to climb into one of the earlier PCs and pull the bugs out of the, um, uh, the system. So women have been very tightly interlaced with programming. I like, like, I see that. It was only when home PCs started to be marketed to boys that we saw a drop-off. And then later in the 90s, around about the time first-person shooters started coming out and video games got bloody and violent, very male-orientated, again, we saw another drop-off. But women have always been there, a very key and important part. A lot of it's a part of a broader story as well, um, where there's not enough um, women participating in STEM, so science, tech, engineering, mathematics. People decide very young on whether or not this is their skills. In the UK, but by the time um, a, a young woman is in is in year eight, you, there is most likely that she will have been put off technology by a parent or a peer uh, or a teacher. It's really depressing to see the imbalance, not just of enrolments, but of graduates. Um, we start with better numbers. We start with, well, not even, but we start with more women and we graduate fewer. Once something's got a, it's a vast majority of men and then everyone knows that, then that can be very intimidating and sort of act as a barrier. Women aren't going to feel comfortable in a place where men not only dominate the workforce, but dominate the language, the landscape, and the culture. And really that started mainly because of that, how games were initially sold and how, where video games came from. You know what Elliot's gonna do? Jeff too. And who they were most played by, and those were young men. Three, it hooks up to his TV, and Jeff's at his Radio Shack Color Computer 3 playing the newest football game. And when those young men grew up, they became programmers that made games that young men want to play. Well, I, I only play for the fighting. And that kind of self-perpetuation of that whole cycle has led to build an environment that's not very friendly to women. It's definitely a, a sort of a risk to take in some ways to, to go, yes, I'm a woman and I'm a gamer, and there's often a reaction. Growing up as a girl gamer, um, the discouraging thing was just the lack of female characters. Uh, it wasn't a problem for me so much because at the start we had games like Gauntlet where you had the, you know, the red Valkyrie. But uh, when we went into the 90s, all of a sudden the female characters dried up. Who is a gamer? Um, is still, it's so important to that kind of core group that if you're a girl, you're probably not a gamer in the first place because you don't tick all of these other boxes um, that we've made up on the spot. You know, you didn't have a Commodore 64 or you don't have a favorite Pokemon or whatever the criteria is. There are a lot of challenges I think that women face as a consequence of the gaming culture and the consequence of the coding culture. Um, if Men have a hard time accepting that women are outperforming them in something. 
they will ensure that the women don't have the opportunity to compete in that venue. And that's what you essentially see happening in Gamergate, for example. By now not allowing women to compete, you won't end up losing to them. Um, it's As a consequence, it's harder for women to get into the culture because the culture is unfriendly. That It's not all the individuals that, of course, are being unfriendly. It's the ones that have the most to lose. 8.7% women in the Australian games industry is not good enough. It's less than mining. That's, yeah, that's ridiculous. So we, we really need to have main peak industry bodies standing up and saying, yeah, we've got to do something better about this because this is not, not good enough. And when I started to look into the stats and to various different things, and I, I was trying to figure out, like, how do I help these numbers improve? Because at one point I had thought that the that the numbers would have just improved over time naturally but I was starting to but I have realized that actually that's not the case we need to do a lot more and be a lot more active and vocal and some of the things that I have um, put my attention into would be getting involved with education I was offered a scholarship um, as as a woman coming into programming and that's why I took it so that I mean that needs to continue Definitely just kind of showing girls that this is an option and, and this is something that could happen. You need to be seeing people doing what you're doing or people doing what you want to do and aspire to that you can relate to. So if you're only seeing white men doing this thing that you want to do and you're a black woman, you, it's much harder for you to go, I can see myself in that position. Um, so I'm really keen on getting more women to stand up and say, hey, this is what I do. And, and that way younger people can then identify with that and, and be able to go, yeah, I could do that too. Elements of yourself, I think, do come into it. Being more visible myself has been a thing that I have also had to um, get the courage to do. Um, and uh, as much as I'm very, I mean, I'm always very happy to be asked to do things, I always have like a lot of nerves about doing them. And I've, I've realized it's actually useful for people to know that, and to, but also to see that there are people like them making games and being visible within the games industry. I like working for Sierra because I founded it. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably one of the few game designers that have that, that character be female, you know, quite often. And I think in order to support women to stay around, we need to really have, invest efforts in women specifically. A lot of companies are indies now because of that GFC thing, so a lot of indie companies don't have an HR department. They don't have somewhere you can contact and who will fight for you or bring up grievances that you have. If you look at the pay gap differences, uh, we're looking at a $10,000 pay difference, Australian dollars, uh, between men and women, and then another 10000 between programmers and artists. So if you're a female artist like myself, you're $20,000 less than a male programmer. However, some people have spun this wage gap into a positive. Earlier this year, for instance, Giselle Rosman launched an incentive for Game Jam Melbourne in the hopes that more women would participate. I developed what we call the um, wage gap discount. So it's generally recognised that in Australia, um, women get paid 17% less than men, so all women got a 17% discount. I then had someone go, I understand why you're doing that because we don't have enough women involved and can that, if this is going to help get more women involved, great. I've just bought three tickets, can you give them to some women who'd like to come along? And then that snowballed and we had 25% women jamming in Melbourne out of 200 jammers, which may not sound great, but having been involved in events for so long, I can tell you that the average is between 5 and 15%. For someone with such a fondness for women, I wonder if you've ever considered what it might be like to be one. You can't just wait, because if you just wait, nothing changes. Um, there have to be um, people, and, and generally I do mean men, who will stand up and say, look, I, I'm a feminist, or I have uh, an interest in, in women's rights. She wants to go out and work, and have a career other than being a mom, that she should be able to do that as well, and that that's to the benefit of everybody. Or, I want to see more women in my office, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to go and uh, help younger girls learn how to program computers, or I'm going to sit and listen to somebody tell me about their game ideas, or um, something positive, you know, that, that, that's, uh, again, that um, I'm not going to... I'm not going to harass a woman. Well, congratulations, you're a functional human being. So, are we equals? Being selective and filling your panels with three women and two men instead of three men and two women, so be it. Um, because that's how you're going to rebalance the world. The world is already so skewed in one direction that it's going to take actions that appear to be skewed the other way for it to be anything like balanced. 
Women experience life in a different way and so they often bring a different viewpoint. Even though I believe that the best person for the job should be chosen for the job, I do think that you know, there is a disadvantage to women in the industry, so I don't think there's any harm in having extra incentives to bring women into the industry. You euthanised your faithful companion cube more quickly than any test subject on record. It's important for women to be in the industry. It's important for everyone to be in the industry. As many voices as possible um, adds to the sort of richness. I mean, the way you get that is by having diverse voices, whether they be women, men, you know, um, intersex, you know, transgender, uh, straight, gay, everything, you know, it, it, we've got to have those diverse voices, um, otherwise we're just going to stack name. If we're going to actually entertain the world, and if the games we make are reflective of the people making them, then our studio kind of needs to be comprised of the people of the world. And we have a wild spectrum of really awesome people at the studio that affect what goes into our games, and you can feel it. With Tearaway, we were, we were creating an adventure that had you, the player, interacting with, a, with um, Iota or Twa. And within that, I was very proud of the fact that we were really thinking about gender and how we ask people how they want to be represented. When you're making games that have communities, you have to be progressive about how you're thinking about how those people are represented. And there just isn't really any room not to be. Many voices is good. And once they get over the fear, they'll realise that, that the more voices we have access to, the better our lives will be, the better our art will be, the better our pastimes will be, the better our friendships will be. The more voices you have access to, the better. Games are going to be telling the stories of the future, like the, you know, history is going to be like, oh, what games we're doing where? And so not having women's voices there, it's just really restricting whose stories we get to hear, whose perspectives you get to see, you know, like, it's not a gender divide, really. We all play games, we all, humans play, it's what we do. We usually think, oh, men play these kinds of games and women like these kinds of games, and if we let women into the gaming sphere, then it's going to change the kinds of games that we like. It's actually, our researchers actually found that's not the case. What men like and what women like are actually overlap really, really well. If women start developing their own games and playing the games that they want to play, will that change the scene? No, it'll probably just make it friendlier and more open and allow for more diversity. The games that people want will still be there. I have a name. It's Liara to Sony, and I'd appreciate you using it from now on. It's an amazing industry, you know, like it is a medium of our time. But that real understanding yeah. of um, sort of different systems working together in a harmony and the real people that are involved with those and the narrative journeys, those are all things which help us as, as, as humans. And we, we've all had that from literature and film and theatre and art, you know, for a long time. And I think it's really important we embrace that the games industry and games are the modern, contemporary way for us to find those experiences together. It's a really exciting time to be a female game developer. Nowadays, with Unity 3D and Unreal Engine being affordable and programs like Blender and Modo being right down in the low price point, you can, you can start making a game tonight, you can release it next week. There are so few barriers and we're working really hard to just knock down those last barriers to make it something where gamer girls can just go, no, this is a serious career and I want to do it. And if women want to make games, make them, because you'll find there's other women out there. You might not have any in your immediate circles, but if you search for them, you'll find them and then you won't feel so bad. Like, when there's 60 women behind you, you feel a lot more comfortable. So make stuff, it's amazing, it's fun.